In this video, we're going to go ahead and continue with this idea of optimization. And so here's, I always love these problems when they embed one in, inside another. Uh, a rectangle is bounded by the x-axis and the semicircle given by that function. What is the length and width, uh, what length and which, width blah, 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 should the rectangle have so that its area is a maximum? And if you graph this, now we're, let's transform this just a little bit because we, we want to draw a picture to see what we're dealing with. And so we're going to have to kind of change this up to figure out exactly what it looks like. Now this is the positive of this. And so if you recall circles at all, uh, Y is going to be always positive. There's no values for X in which Y will be negative. And so it's going to sit on top of the X axis. Okay, we just need to figure out what its radius is. So if we square both sides, we get x squared uh, is equal to 25 minus x squared, or I'm sorry, y squared is equal to 25 minus x squared. If we add x squared to both sides, then we have the traditional x squared plus y squared is equal to 25, and that is of the form of a normal circle, which is x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. The radius squared is 25 r squared is equal to 25, which means our radius is 5, not negative 5. There's no, whoop, ugh, that's an awful 5. Okay, this is just kind of, if, if you're unfamiliar or haven't worked with geometry in a while, uh, this is a good thing to start out with. A, it brings back some of your geometry. B, it gives you a picture to look at. And so if we were just going to quick draw this out, just to kind of give ourselves an idea of what's happening here, uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And why am I not doing the, the negative? Huh. Think about that. Okay, so we've got a circle that comes up and back down. That's eh, not too bad, really, for freehanding it. My drawings typically are horrible. And so now we have this rectangle in here. And be very careful on your assumptions on the rectangle. Don't think it's a square. Don't think it's a, you know, a rectangle that has to sit on negative three. Don't think those things. It's just a rectangle. Okay. Now this is what we're dealing with. So let's go ahead and try to work this out. Now its area is a maximum, which means the area of a rectangle is equal to the length times the width, where if we identify this as the length, then we identify that as the width, and that is the width. But now we need some way to relate that back to what we've got. And so if we were to call the point here, x, y, we can use symmetry to call this point here negative x, y. And so this may help us out because the width is going to be y. Width is equal to y and the length is equal to twice x. And so now we have our new area, which is a is equal to, the length is 2x, and now the width is y, but y, recall, is this thing here. And so we have y is equal to the square root 25 minus x squared. All right. So now, now that we've got that, we can go ahead and take its derivative derivative of a with respect to x, we have 2x times that stuff. And so we have to be very cautious here. We have to use not only the product rule, but with stuff inside the square root, we have to use the chain rule as well. So product rule says derivative of the first, which is 2, times the second, which is the square root, 25 minus x squared plus the derivative of the second times the first. The derivative of the root of x is 1 
over the root of x, or the root of all that stuff. I should say one half because you're you're taking the or the positive. If you okay, let let me just rewrite it. The square root of 25 minus x squared is the same as 25 minus x squared to raise to the one half. So we're going to bring the one half down. That's where we get our two. We now raise this to the negative one half power when we subtract one, and that gives us our our root underneath. Now, we have to multiply it by what the derivative of what's inside, which is going to be negative 2x, times the first, so that we have negative 2x times the first, which is 2x. So, going through this, we have dA dx is equal to 2 root... 25 minus x squared plus this 2 and that 2 cancel, so we have negative 2x squared divided by root 25 minus x squared. And now we want to find out when that is 0. So 0 is equal to all of that. 2, 25 minus x squared plus negative 2x squared divided by root 25 minus x squared. So to clear the fraction, I'm going to multiply everything, everything by the square root of 25 minus x squared. The good thing here is I don't have to worry about problems with domain. So if I distribute this to each thing, OK, so 0 times that is still going to be 0. 2 times root 25 minus x squared times root 25 this is the same as saying 2 times the square root of that stuff squared. Well, the square roots are going to cancel, and so you get 2 times 25 minus x squared. And now this is going to cancel the bottom over here, and so you just get plus a negative 2x squared. So let's go ahead and keep simplifying this. So we have 0 is equal to 50 minus 2x squared minus 2x squared, which is going to give us 50, whoop, 50 minus 4x squared. All right, so now that means that negative 50 is equal to negative 4x squared, which means that uh, 50 over 4 is equal to x squared, which gives us that x is equal to, and this is going to be uh, 5 roots of 2 over 2. So here's our x. Now remember, y is equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared. x squared was 50 over 4, and so y is equal to the square root of 25 minus 50 over 4. 100 over 4 minus 50 over 4 is 50 over 4. y is equal to the square root of 50 over 4, which again is 5 roots of 2 over 2. Okay, and so the width, now be very, very careful here. You found x and y. You did not find the length and the width. The width is y. The length is twice x. So if we go back and we finish that out, go ahead and pull up a different color here. If you finish that out, y is equal to the width, but the length is equal to twice x. So the width is equal to 5 square roots of 2 over 2, and the length is equal to 5 roots of 2. See, not bad.